Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is January 18th, 2021. Feels good to say that. Oh. And I'm your co-host, The Fat Wizard, joined today by... Alamaxia. And Lobos. And today, we're taking a look at Max Payne, released in North America on the PC, July 23rd, 2001, and then a bunch of other platforms later on in this year. And uh, so, you know, now that it's 2021, games under... Uh, 2001 qualify it's really weird i guess i felt like this is the first game we've played that's almost like hd i don't know did you guys get the sense that we're almost like exiting <laughs> retro land here or is it just me i i think definitely once we're starting to hit the playstation 2 era here we're gonna start seeing games that we we're gonna feel like we didn't play too long ago mm -hmm. it's uh it's yeah. 20 years just creeps up on you but I think this game was so much fun, and it, I was reminded of how much fun I had when I first played it. Um, just like the the running and gunning and slow motion time stopping and stuff like that. So uh, l let me walk you through kind of the basic of this game here. It is a an old school New York hard boiled cop um, inspired game, right? With like that kind of visual novel. Very film noir. Uh, yeah, film mm -hmm. noir, uh, like a visual novel, a graphic novel presentation in terms of like the cutscenes and stuff. They would actually have the comic book, um, you know, things kind of line up and voice over. And, and that's really fun. I thought that was a really great way to drive the plot along. Essentially, it's a third person shooter. And it's, you know, if you didn't have the time mechanic, which allows you to slow down time, I'd say it's a pretty, you know, by the book shooter. There's nothing too special about it except for the really cool ability to slow down time. Did you guys, did you guys really uh, get your fill of slowing down time here? <laughs> uh, there was, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was gonna say, I've been actually playing a lot of uh, kind of more competitive FPS lately. So I opted to do a lot more like corner peeking with less slow down time. Yeah. So it, I did use it in certain cases, but uh, I did a lot less slow down time than, than I thought that I would. Oh, yeah. you're missing out. For me, I, I, towards the end, I was using slow down a lot more than the beginning because of how, how powerful all the uh, enemies started getting. <laughs> yeah, and I do remember uh, back when I played this, you know, 20 years ago, I was like, I remember this game being kind of difficult. Mm. And when you start out the game, there's only one difficulty unlocked. Yeah. Uh, it's just like normal mode. I don't remember what the difficulty name is, but uh, I'd say like the first third, the game's broken up into three different chapters. And the first chapter is not too bad. But yeah, after chapter two and three, Things start getting a little rough, and you start wanting to abuse that quick save, right? I, I know Lobos is a uh, a fan of the quick save as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was so, mashing the F five button around every. <laughs> I take five steps. It's like you mash, kill mash a guy. F5. Yep, kill a guy. <laughs> F five, kill a guy. F guy. F five. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So you start out the game here, and you you're actually it's a it's a big flashback. So it actually, the the beginning of the game starts out at, actually at the end of the game with you on the top of the um, uh, what's the building name? Uh, the Aesir building? Aesir building, yeah. And you get like a little radio comm saying, uh, uh, you know, he's on, he's on top. The, everything's gone mad. Send backup. Uh, and then Max Payne kind of narrates looking over the, the building. He's like, hey, I got to go back three years ago to tell you what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so you go in there. It's kind of a normal day. Max Payne is a normal cop on the NYPD. He's living in Joyzy, New Jersey. And uh, he comes home, and his wife and his baby have been murdered. That's that's no good. That's uh. Well, what's that's really sad time. really harrowing in the beginning of this game is they aren't murdered when he comes home. They are in the act of being murdered as he yeah. arrives. So it's the voice acting in this game actually I think is incredible for the time era that we're dealing with. <laughs> Um, because mm -hmm. I say harrowing because the, the woman that played the voice of the, uh, of the wife, her screams, they're haunting. They're scary. Yeah, they are. They're, mm -hmm. But it's they're, so they're very well shrill and kind of, 
they're, they're kind of like getting into your spine and yeah. make you like kind of cringe or a little bit, right? It really made so, you feel for Max Payne and get into the reason of why he's going to be doing what he's going to do. Yeah, I mean, if folks that have seen John Wick, it's it's kind of that same setup where it's like, hey, this this guy is a the ultimate killer or will become the ultimate killer at least, and he has some uh family family members deceased and he's got to go down and and exact his revenge so that's what we're doing mm -hmm. we um so basically the reason why people uh you're well seemingly the reason why your wife and child were murdered is, it looks like it was like a random act of violence by these druggies that were hopped up on this drug called Valkyr it's like a new designer drug that's that's coming out, mm -hmm. and uh, so a bunch of hood hoodlums come and and, and mm -hmm. kill your wife and, and baby, and then uh, you basically, I think you become you you start to be an undercover cop. You get transferred to the DEA, I believe, and then you mm -hmm. are now an undercover cop yep, infiltrating you are undercover. In by the uh, Punchinello crime family. Yeah, the Punchinello, oh, yeah. which, by the way, <laughs> like, what a great crime lord name, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, er, er, all the, all the, uh, so Max Payne leans on its tropes, and so all of the, uh, all of the crime families are very obvious, like that real, real Italian last name, right? Because uh, we deal with the Punchinellos, we deal with the, uh, oh, there's another one, L Lupino. Yep, Jack mm -hmm. um, Lupino. And then, of course, we even have some Russians come in. Vladimir comes in a little bit later. So True. it's real classic uh, crime dramas here. And, uh, well, so let's get, get to the, the actual first mission here. You are you are basically told to meet one of your companions. Um, I'm trying to get his name here. Oh, Alex, Alex Balder. Alex Balder. And you were called yeah. by Bibi, uh, one of your colleagues that is in the DEA, to meet him at the, uh, the Roscoe Street Station, which is where we're, yeah. our first level is, is going through the subway station. Mm -hmm. And you uh, you first uh, go to like uh, some sort of bathroom, I believe, and you just see bloodstains leading into the bathroom. Mm. And you see your dead body. And Max, like, pulls out his gun. He's like, all right, it's time to get serious here. <laughs> and so, you know, what, what happens next is just a bunch of really fun jumping around, diving, slow motion, shooting, and all that. Which, by the way, I had a lot of fun editing this because you, I, I could basically get the highlights of when things worked out and looked really fun and like when I'm diving and I get like the headshots and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Most of the times I, I was diving and missing everything. I, did you guys? <laughs> did you guys have any issues like shooting and diving there? Uh, my my shotgun wasn't the most accurate as all shotguns <laughs> are. But once I once I decided to switch over to the assault rifle mid game, the diving diving and shooting was a lot better. Yeah, the Colt Commando. Is that what it was? Oh yeah, the Colt Commando. Oh, oh yeah, that thing was yeah. awesome. Yeah, so, so going back, well, I, I was just gonna say, uh, so like, uh, a lot of the weapons kind of have like a a randomness to the aim component, like it's not one hundred percent accurate. So I found myself latching on to things that were either more accurate or didn't need to be accurate, like shotgun. You just kind of <laughs> center it, and then wherever the spread goes, like yeah. it'll do the job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like the uh, the Berettas uh, and the Desert Eagle, they're a little tricky because they, especially the the Desert Eagle, because it's su such a slow uh, refire rate, right? Yeah. So you kind of have to line that shot up. But I felt like the uh, Desert so, Eagle was more accurate than the Beretta. Like I, I could pick off oh, someone yeah. much further away. Yeah. Yeah, you just you have to take the time or just be very quick on the draw here. So we're seeing a very important plot point coming up here. Our buddy. Alex is about to get murdered by an unknown assassin, which this is this is BB, as we, we find out later. Um, I think uh, at the beginning of the game, you know, so Max Payne would have obviously recognized BB killed Alex, but BB's actually out of the view mm -hmm. uh, when he shoots him. And at that time, the player hasn't really seen what BB looks like, correct? So it's, it's sort of an interesting thing where it's like, the player sees the face but doesn't know the name. Right. Max knows the name but hasn't seen the face. So it's kind of cool there. Mm -hmm. 
And then after that, we go to kind of a seedy hotel, <laughs> right? This one was... So again, one of the things I really love about Remedy games here is that they do a really great job building an environment and, and making it sort of livable or seem like there's there's things going on there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think the, the hotel room is one of my favorite levels because there's so much detail to it and there's so much like, you know, it's a seedy place. And so there's kind of like things that make you look, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's kind of, uh, all right, whatever, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever you're into. Yeah, like there's one part in the hotel where you come across um, basically this area where they're, I mean, they're filming a porno in the CD hotel and this, this woman is filming it without the knowledge of who she's with and she's yeah. selling these videos off on the side. And this is all just side plot that you get, these little side yep. stories. And the world is, the world is so alive. It, the you can open up all these random uh closets and armoires and find little bits of ammo you can turn on one of the beds if you know what that <laughs> means and one of them yeah. will shake off to the side and you find a shotgun under it yeah <laughs> i think we're doing that like right now too yeah, yeah i thought that was so cool there's not a whole lot of secrets in the game uh interestingly enough there's a there is a secret in the tutorial area which people i saw were kind of directing you to go yep. to and see lobos yep. But yeah, this game is very much like, you know, you you run from corridor to corridor and you shoot. And uh, <laughs> actually, so one of the things we're looking at right now, and, and Rem Remedy did this a lot in their future games where they embedded <laughs> little TV shows inside of their uh, their TV. And this that one that was uh, Lords and Ladies. Lords and Ladies. <laughs> it's it's and I love it because it's it's obviously very hammy in the acting oh, yeah. there. You know, it's like, oh, my Lord, or, you know, stuff like that. My lady. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of those. I love it. One of their, like, when it started to get popular to be able to, like, interact with a bunch of things. So, like, oh, yeah. you can turn on all the sinks and flush all the toilets. So, I was just having a blast just mashing E on everything and seeing what, what went and what didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we just got a tip that one of the rooms here, I think it was room 313, is where we need to go to find someone. I don't remember exactly what we're doing. But one of the things that's really cool is you open the door and you see this counterweight just kind of fall down. And I'm like, well, that seems really bad. I'm going to move out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone that's played Dungeons & Dragons knows <laughs> that if you see a counterweight uh, on, around a door, get away. And sure enough, what happens after a second or two, a shotgun basically would shoot whatever is standing in that doorway. I was like, that's really cool. And they never use that again. That's a one-time mm -hmm. thing. So, uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed some of the, the ways that they, they they tried to spice up the gameplay. Because, again, it is like you're pretty much just running and gunning for the full eight hours. And then in, they intersparse these, these little plot points here uh, with these comic books. Which, by the way, I was surprised. Uh, I don't think I would have realized it, but the com if you if you would just take the whole story of Max Payne, just all the comic book stuff, mm -hmm. it's about like fifty eight, almost an hour long. I actually saw it on YouTube. I was like, oh, wow, wow, that actually is wow. like there's a full story there. And so I bet if people wanted to know, like, hey, l let's go into the world of Max Payne. Yeah, uh, I, I you could probably just watch that video for an hour and get all the story and in, in sort of a fun presentation. There. That's cool. Is it through? Is it just the first game or other games as well? Oh yeah, yeah, just the first oh, wow, game. Okay. So yeah, it's nice. like in my eight or nine hours of playthrough, I watched basically an hour of comic book stuff. Wow. So that's cool. Uh, and some of the comic book stuff are are uh, are optional. Like you'll. You'll find a letter, and it will give you a little, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a little uh, thing that's like, oh, here's a little bit more information here. But the start and the end sh points of the chapters are always punctuated with setting up the scene, and uh, you know, explaining what you're gonna do. Which, by the way, I want to segue a little bit into some of the pros that this game has. Uh, I guess this is very, this is very classical. You, you, you talk about this being a noir experience, and it's like, yeah. It's one of these things where he wants to make an analogy out of everything. He can't just <laughs> yeah. say it's snowing, right? Yeah. He's like, it's snowing like diamonds falling from the angel's ears or, you know, or eyes. <laughs> very or, descriptive. You know, just, yeah. Very it's elaborate. Very cool. 
but it, it's, some of it it's comes poetic. off a little cheesy. <laughs> yeah, it's poetic. Yeah, some it, of it, some of it hits really hard. Some of it's a little cheesy, but I, I really like listening to that. Mm-hmm. Tasty cheese. So, <laughs> so as we see here, uh, one of the things I try to do as much as possible is show all the really fun parts where you're diving. One of my favorite things to do. Lobos, you said you like to peek around the corners yeah. a little bit. Yep. And yeah, I think that the way you could play the game is just kind of like peek around the corners and shoot the enemies. But I prefer to peek around the corners, line up the enemies, and then dive yeah. across the room in slow motion. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah. Uh, like Pretty <laughs> it, much every, it was, it was every time I entered a room, I would just be like, all right, just dive in. And then I would back out and then like kind of do some more gunfire. But certainly some of the enemies yeah. were like, very accurate and high damage that you pretty very. much needed to use the slowdown. Mm -hmm. I want to interrupt you real quick because this is one of my <laughs> favorite things. You you meet a, a bartender who's uh, he he's got his pants down for some unmentionable reasons, <laughs> and and he starts to run away from you, and so like you got to chase him down, and it's just it's just brilliant because his pants are around his ankles, and so he's kind of like running around. I don't remember what what this guy's name is he is one of the heads of the punchinello family though i believe mm. and you're meeting him at the at the cd hotel is that there. uh so is that rico muerte that sounds yeah that mm. sounds like it could be right there uh yeah just just so many little fun things that that they do in this game here so we're um worth how about halfway through part one again there's this this game is broken up into three distinct parts. The first part being called um, The American Dream. Uh, the second part being A Cold Day in Hell. And the third part, A Bit Closer to Heaven. And I feel like it is really does feel like a three-act play where initially, you know, you, you've, you've got these, these thugs that came in that hopped up on Valkyr killing your family, and then your objective is, I want to go kill this crime lord, right? And eventually the story is going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And almost in the same way as, like, Deus Ex, we talked about just a couple episodes ago, they, they kind of go um, some interesting conspiracy theories and, and some stuff like that. But we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. Now this area we just com we just finished here I thought was cool because y you're blocked off and there are some little propane tanks and um you, what you're supposed to do is shoot the propane tanks and then uh it, the propane tanks will like shoot through the wall and explode and open up a new path and it reminded me and th it, this game does this a couple other times as well but it reminds me of the old school first person shooters where they were not afraid to put things in the environment you had to kind of explore and, and play around with to progress, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a big red button or an objective marker right. that says, shoot this. It's like, you're trapped until you figured this out. Right. It took me a little bit to figure it out. I think, Lobos, you, you shot that thing pretty quickly. Yeah, the problem is that the hitbox on those is like the top of the valve. So you can shoot like the oh. body of it and it, nothing will happen. <laughs> so I was like, what the heck? Okay. And I think somebody actually mentioned like, hey, shoot the top. And I was like, oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> That's why I was yeah. having troubles yeah. then. It took me a few times uh, lining that up and getting it right. I, I think that particular canister killed me a good three or four times before <laughs> no. I figured out the before <laughs> yeah. I figured out the you hit it from the top from the side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because it will uh it will shoot straight at you and like you know I got impaled in the chest multiple times from that. So yeah you have to go off to the side there. We just met uh one of the I don't know if he's like the head of the police department. I always th viewed him as sort of the Jim Gordon from Batman. Mm. His name is um, uh, Bravero. Oh, man, I just lost his first name there. Um, but, yeah, he, he's kind of like the uh, the uh, Boy Scout cop. And he's after you because... Actually, we should explain Jim why... Jim Bravara. Jim Bravara, thank you. We should explain why Max Payne is, is killing all these people because... Well, so for for one, you know, obviously there's that the crime lord stuff, but what's also happening is you were undercover, but the people the the police don't know you're undercover. So the police think that you're a bad guy too. And so Jim Bervera is coming out and he's basically the uh 
the police well, the- pressure is going to start coming down harder on you. So you've almost got, like, you're dealing with the, the crime lords and you're also dealing with the police all trying to kill you. So I, th- I think the police knew that you were a DEA agent, but because they did not know that BB killed Alex, they thought... Yeah, yes, they thought Max Payne right. killed Alex, so they're like, "There's a murderer on the loose," and now he's literally going around killing all of these mobsters. Yeah, that's right. Because you were also fleeing from the crime scene, so you know you, that that's a uh, yeah. I know he's he's between a rock and a hard place. Mm-hmm. So here's a section that's really funny. I I'm trying to remember <laughs> which level this is. I think this is on a level called Fear that gives men wings. You walk up into an area. And you see two guys that are up against a wall, and they're like, they're like, which one should I cut, the blue wire or the green wire? And they're like, cut the green wire. No, not that one. And then it, they, you know, they <laughs> blow up. Um, and then you go and try to open up the door, and the door doesn't open, but the jostling of the door actually causes the wall that had been blown up to kind of cave in, and that's your entrance into the next area. So kind of clever way of... of progressing it's done very cartoon like where the door just sits there completely untouched and <laughs> all of the wall around it above yeah, to yeah. the side just in <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, uh, all right so let's see we are now chasing an individual i'm trying to figure out exactly who this is uh v- is this Vinny? uh no i don't think this is Vinny Gag- gagniti it's not yet okay well, in any case, there's a dude with these these sunglasses, and you're you're chasing him through the city a little bit on the rooftops, and at the very end, he jumps on a train, and and your quest marker says, like follow, yeah, like follow wherever him. he went. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, follow him. And it was funny because I figured it out after a couple tries. Um, Lobos, you figured it out, but the hitboxes kind of killed you over and over and over. Yeah. And so it kind of like, you're just like, is this actually the thing I'm supposed yeah, to do? Yeah, so I started comical. doubting myself. It was a little uh, more particular than I was thinking. I was actually trying to jump onto like one of the overhead kind of structural yep. part and then down onto the train. But when I tried to do that, it would just invis wall me and I would fall to my death. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. uh. but I managed to get it eventually. Yeah, yeah, I, I died but it a is... handful of times for the same thing. Just you had to get that running jump off the right pixel. Yeah, the yeah. But it is one of those things where it's like you, you know, one or two deaths, and you're kind of like, well, am I really supposed to be jumping yeah. onto a train from a building here? Oh man! By the way, so we're we're looking at a close up of a, a couple individuals that are coming after Max Payne. I just love the scowls everyone has in the game, right? <laughs> It just this is where the facial uh, or the textures on the faces they they're starting to look a little bit better. They still look like someone just put a texture on a polygon, right? So not quite modeled well yeah. enough. Yeah, but yeah, it, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it reminds me of like Goldeneye, like where it's mm-hmm. kind of just like a maybe a l- super low res photo of a person just slapped on a flat <laughs> face front. Um, I think somebody said that a lot of the faces were dev members, which makes sense. But, yes. Yeah. The the face of Max Payne here is uh, Sam Lake. <laughs> Sam Lake was the, I believe he was the creative director on um, on Max Payne. Mm-hmm. Um, but, nice. but yeah, he looks exactly like it. It's so crazy to see. <laughs> if you look at pictures of Sam Lake, it's like it's literally Max Payne oh, with the hair and everything. They always do it's the really smirk crazy. too. Man, I bet. I bet in photos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we uh, I just got the name here. We were fi- uh, f- we were actually looking for Guinea, uh, sorry, Vinny Gogniti. and so he he's he's basically uh, Max Payne has finally caught up to him, and he's trying to find out who La- or where La- Lapino is, and he he kind of enforces a little pre- police brutality. He kind of shoves his his Beretta in his face, and he finds out that Lapino is in the Ragnarok Theater. And I believe this is the first time we start to get sort of this this Viking mythology that that pops up mm. more towards the end of the game. Um, but this one is um this one's a really cool area because it's a it's a disco we're running through now with lights and there's people that are around you know shooting you while you're on the dance floor. And uh, what I really think was cool is coming back to this game from having played some of Remedy's other games in particular. Alan Wake, uh, one of the DLCs in Alan Wake has you fighting during a concert, 
And I almost could see the roots of that in this level where a couple areas where you're like pushing consoles and pyrotechnics come off yeah, yeah. and enemies are coming at you while the music, like the club music is playing. I was mm -hmm. like, that, that's pretty cool. So here we've got the, uh, we're, we're starting to find that Lupino is into some kind of weird stuff, right? Lobos, did you want to talk a little bit about some of this cult stuff that we see? Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what happens around here. I I remember like the the more combative parts to this particular level. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, I remember this. I can't remember. There's some. Is it him that's reading like some some really yeah, weird he's like, like he's like almost like speaking in tongues. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like saying he's random like out kind of satanic any, stuff. Any old and and dead god that he can to help him. Yeah. Yeah, Even Cthulhu. but this is this is cool because it goes from this real hard-boiled cop detective to this occult stuff, and almost over the course of maybe like one and a half chapters, and that was really weird. It was a random. It was it was really random, um, but yeah, it's almost like um, it almost reminded me of a, of of a Batman villain, where it's like this guy almost has some supernatural powers, and so. He is not immune to fire, though, and as one of the weapons you have is a Molotov, I pretty much just stunlock him <laughs> oh my with gosh. Molotovs. And uh, how, how did you guys do against this boss fight? Uh, several attempts. <laughs> yeah, several attempts. I mean, I think the hardest part is kind of leading up to him where there's just a bunch of these agents dropping down from, like, the top rafters, and mm -hmm. you don't necessarily know where they're going to drop down. I definitely was employing a lot of grenades and Molotovs mm -hmm. as well, and I think... I think I was mostly rocking the shotgun around this point, so just kind of hiding behind shotgun one of the posts, waiting great. for him to get close, and then and then take my shots where I could. Now I kind of wonder how much of of Lupino's kind of personality was fueled by the Valkyr. Just thinking about the drug mm, yeah. and what it would do to the to the mind, and mm -hmm. especially what's going to happen to Max Payne right now, where he's kind of slipped something and he goes into this delusional dream oh, area. Yeah. If someone goes into his dream area enough times, like a Filipino would have, it, that that kind of get, gives me a, a reason why that that occult kind of came into play. That's a good point. Yeah, and and the person that slipped us that uh, that roofie there was was Mona Sachs, and I guess she's an assassin. She she doesn't play too big of a part in the story, but they almost introduce her like she's going to be a huge character. Hmm. Right, but she kind of pops up here or there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about the the dream sequences because every single person that I've ever talked to about Max Payne, <laughs> the only thing they really remember about it is like, yeah, there was some really weird, scary <laughs> stuff with with a baby crying and like blood trails. Right, oh. Al Max, do you, do you want to walk us through what's going on there? So Payne is dosed with some Valkyr, and he is effectively taken to this dream world state where he is reliving in this very twisted nightmare world the the murder of his family and a part of this involves you going through this absolutely pitch dark room and all you have is this thin thin line of blood that you can walk on so thin if you if you press one direction you're just going to fall off and you got to kind of reset <laughs> <Yeah>. that area <laughs> you got to redo the whole thing and, and sometimes you got to jump terrible. from line to line but the entire time you're hearing like this baby crying, this woman screaming, yeah. and and mm. sometimes there was one time like this scream came up, like this <laughs> out of nowhere, and I was like, "What's going on?" <laughs> oh, it was they're so creepy, but they always end with you just kind of coming out of it. Hmm. Yeah, and you seem, I, I think, at least in the second one. Uh, the second drug inf infused or induced hallucinogen, um, you see yourself as the the bad guy, and I don't remember if you see oh, yourself yeah, yeah. as a bad guy and like the one shooting your wife. I can't remember if the first one has that. I I think the I think the first one did, and then the second one had a lot more um, breaking the fourth wall. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I don't want to. I want to spoil that yet because we'll get there. But there's mm -hmm. some cool stuff there. And then you wake up and you are chained—not chained, but tied to a a chair in the mm -hmm. boiler room, right? And there's a baseball bat that you've got mm -hmm. cracked over the head a couple times with. 
And uh, so you basically start with no weapons, and you get to use that baseball bat to take out the first guy, and the first guy drops a gun, and then you go use that gun to go kill, kill other guys. Shoutouts to the, uh, uh, I will say, the baseball bat animation, because it's like, yeah, I was, it's I was, like his yeah. wrists are like breaking while he's swinging this thing, and it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's so good. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of like, he just kind of like twists it around. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah. But you get out of there, and one of the things we've seen a couple one of these before. But you have a uh, you have little comic strips that you can find from. Um, oh, it's like the it's the mo of some some crime guy, and it's called like the baseball bat captain baseball killer. bat boy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I guess he 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 puts down those comic strips wherever he commits a crime. Mm. I don't know. Did we ever see who that baseball bat guy killer is, or is that? Did I miss that? I don't think about, I ever uh, saw how Frank that Niagara. Up. Oh, is that who? who yeah, Fra- puts Frank those Niagara in? is the is a well. He's the guy that um. Yeah, yeah, it's him because he he's the one that ties you to the chair. He's the one that has the bat oh, and everything. Okay. And one of my favorite lines from this game comes from that scene, uh, where he he has you tied to the chair. He's like, I'm I'm Frankie the Bat Niagara, and and uh, Max Payne's like. Niagara, does that mean you cry a lot? And then <laughs> and the inner dialogue of Max Payne, pissing him off was a smart thing to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, we meet Vladimir. Vladimir, uh, he is a Russian mobster, and he's he's got a turf war going on with, uh, against Punchello. And so he basically says, hey, Max, you do me a favor. I've got a, I've got a, a location for you to go get a bunch of guns. All you need to do is go blow up this or go kill this guy and you get to keep all the guns. And so you have to go like blow up a ship, I believe. Um, mm. And then you can loot the hole. And so what we're doing now is we're in the cargo holds and we are just making our way to the ship. I, I fast forwarded this because it's a very, very long scene, yeah. but I kind of think it's cool where you're on these. So you're in this big like shipping warehouse outside and you've got this huge mechanical thing, which is intended to pick up big cargo, um, cargo boxes and move them around. And so you're actually almost piloting that through the level. But and levels, <laughs> I know you notice this. It's very rusty, right? Because it makes a lot oh, yeah. of noise. <laughs> it's like they they cranked up the sound of that. It's just it's just like <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. I think so. my favorite part of this level, though, is that's where you first get, or it's the first where I first found the sniper rifle, and uh, yeah, but you didn't like using it because you you were like, oh, no, I don't no, want to go into slow motion. No, I used it all the time. I just did not uh-huh. zoom with it. If you zoom with it and well, shoot, yeah, then it okay. will show you the bullet go. That's the coolest thing. I want to yeah, see but... the, the bullet go through the guy's head. The, it was cool the first two times, and then I was like, <laughs> never again. And it's yeah. actually like a hundred percent accurate if you just if you're free aiming it. So I just I used that pretty much as much as I could. <laughs> the sniper rifle was super helpful later on with uh when you could just bullet time stand like not not a uh-huh. dive bullet time but just like bullet time walk into a room and you could pick off four guys really quick with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of worth mentioning a little bit because we we haven't really talked about the bullet time. Mm-hmm. So the bullet time is a way for you to slow down the game, and it's really weird because enemies still seem to have the the same accuracy so it's like Hmm. i I felt or i found many times i would just bullet time into a hail storm of bullets that would kill me Mm. um so so you had to kind of it wasn't quite the get out of jail free card i kind of wanted right i I guess when i play this game i just want to die forward (laughs) in slow motion and shoot people and that's a good way to to die yeah it's not like it gives you iframes or anything like it just slows down time it doesn't give you an advantage other than the fact that you get to aim more more quickly or yeah. aim, aim better. And you look really That's cool true. while That's true. doing it. And also, I think one of the things that also is a huge detriment to it is, all right, so when you, when you slow down time, there's two ways of slowing down time. Mm. There's one where you can jump and slow down at the same time, and it's basically then once you hit the ground, time will resume. Mm. Or you can manually trigger it, and then you can just run around and shoot, and that's actually very really useful. One of the problems with jumping and it, while in slow motion and shooting is once you hit the ground, your character stops shooting yeah. for a, a good portion of the time. So like imagine you are diving into a room and you're shooting and 
you don't get all the guys by the time you hit the ground, then you're basically defenseless for a good, I don't know, quarter to a half a second. And often that that's enough to get you killed. Yeah. And I feel like that little tweak, just the extra time where I'm like, okay, I can shoot even while on the ground, that little tweak would have made this game so much more fun. Did you ever do any uh, bullet time combo where you did the standstill bullet time and then you could make your bullet time last a little longer if you dive towards the end of it? Mm. It makes oh, sense. No, I didn't do that. It, I don't know if it was something that was intended because the, the bullet time sound like that mm -hmm. stops the, there. The, the, it stops. Like it stops being really slow, but everything is all the animations and everything are still really slow for like an extra second or and a mm -hmm, half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it would help much at all with like the the shooting thing, but it was kind of one of those interesting. Hmm, you could, I wonder if that could be abused. <laughs> yeah, hmm. that's cool. Yeah, I didn't notice that, but often um, I I wasn't running out of the time meter too often there is a separate meter that says how much time mm -hmm. uh, how long you can stop time for or slow down time for and i think it's every time you kill someone it kind of adds some more time there but i i found i was very often about halfway full or maybe three quarters away full yeah now we just finished uh, our good buddy vladimir uh his mission we blew up the ship and oh, man. He is now bringing us to the Punchinello Manor, and he we have three people we have to kill here. Three of his his uh, I guess <laughs> top leaders or whatnot. Yeah, it's the trio. Uh, <laughs> um, trying to trio. find their name. I like this. Uh, while we this do tactic so, you did, where you you slow down time as you're starting to throw a grenade and open the door. Yeah. So that, yeah, because because you have to do that because. If you open the door and then hit slow time, by the time you get your grenade toss off, it's like they've already got some shots on yeah. you. It can be rough. Exactly. So the throwing a grenade is an act. He has to like, <laughs> you know, it's a whole like pull, reach around. Throw. Yeah. It probably takes a good second to throw a, uh, a grenade. So what I ended up doing was just like, I'm going to start the animation. And there's, as, as I'm starting the throw animation, the final throw animation, crack open that door, mm -hmm. and then hopefully the, the grenade just kind of like ekes its way through and, and kills some <laughs> guys there. So we're going through the Punchinello Mansion, and this is uh, this almost looks like one of those old Victorian mansions. It's got that really ugly wallpaper, which is, I, I don't know, it's got like flowers or something. I don't know what, what, what's Vi on there. Very floral about, yeah, that it's, it's hideous. It's like a and, and it's got like a, even old pictures of of almost like British royalty. Yeah, it's like but, a less fancy like, Scarface you know, again, or something. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, again, it's this is the type of a, the manner I would expect a, a crime lord to oh, have, yeah. right? It's it's completely opposite to their <laughs> their personality. <laughs> so we are now we're almost done with this mission, but we get a call from an individual named Alfred Woden. This guy's cool. Uh, Alan Maxey, I'm going to call on you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Alfred Woden? Yeah, so Alfred Woden is, uh, he's a guy that is a part of what is called the Inner Circle. And the Inner Circle, from what you can tell through the game, is just kind of, you know, a secret organization that has uh, a bit more influence on things, both uh, both like uh, police and, and politics. And they even seem like they have some government-level influence. And Woden approaches you and is like, you know, there's there's really bad stuff going on. This uh this drug Valkyr, uh, we're gonna learn later on what it was designed exactly for, but he wants you to stop it. And he's like, You do this and I'll make all these charges go away. And what did you think about that? Uh, I'm gonna call you on, on you, Lobos. What did you think about that where you're going to kill the end boss, Punchinello? Mm -hmm. And basically, government agents cut, storm the room and kill him before you well, get to Well, I don't know. At this point, it's, it kind of started to feel a lot like deus ex. Like, there's a bunch of things going yeah. on here now. Like, <laughs> where's this going to end up? Are we going to end up on Mars with aliens? And But, no, yeah. It, we it, don't quite I, didn't, I wasn't that expecting, far, but... like, it didn't feel like I was getting towards the end of the game. Like, I knew there yeah. had to be more to it. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. there it was. So we, we uh, are now introduced formally to the, uh, it's the CEO of the Acer Corporation, and her name is uh, 
is it Nicole? Yeah, Nicole Horn. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Horn. And she gives us our second taste of Valkyr. And, uh, yeah, it's very much similar to the first one where they do this thing where they almost, they bring... They they bring out the field of view. Yeah. So it makes everything look very like hallway, which was normally short, looks super long here. And again, you have to do this <laughs> sequence where you're following the blood, blood trails. And I tell you what, I I hated this so much because <laughs> yeah. it was so hard to stay on the blood trails. Yeah. It was hard to tell where you were supposed to go. It was, it was almost like you're walking on like a pyramid, such that if you Step yeah. to the side, it would be slanted, and you'd just you'd lose it. It was done. And then they have a maze I, where your visibility is super maze, low. Yeah. I think you're supposed to use the audio cues to kind of follow where to go, but yep. yeah, it was. Yeah, I think that sequence actually took me about 15 minutes of retries there. And I again, I remember being scared of this when I played, and I was like, I don't know, late teens, so I was I was, should have been a big boy then, but this scared me. But going through again, it actually just kind of annoyed me, and I, I it wasn't it wasn't scary anymore, so I'm okay. Yeah, so here's where uh, uh, Max kills himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Poor Max, he's going through some stuff. He really here. is, isn't he? But that that's basically the end of part two. And then we move on to part three, which is a bit closer to heaven. And uh, this one is a lot more, a lot more going into the government organizations here, conspiracies, cover ups, and stuff like this. Uh, one thing I really wanted to mention before I before I forget is I like that the setting of this is like uh, it's actually I think it's during Christmas or sometime around Christmas mm. because it's very uh, it's very heavy snowstorms sure, yeah. and it, it's the it's the the weather reports make uh note of it multiple times it's like hey everyone's frozen in uh this is the heaviest snowfall we've ever seen and w what i like about that is it really makes you feel alone and isolated like max is already he's already got he's he's kind of a one-man machine here no one wants him on his side Everyone's trying to kill him. And then you compound that with the weather, and that actually kind of like, I think it does a really good job on almost mirroring uh, Max, his his peril, uh, quite well. So as an uh, analog for Max's story, I thought that the weather was uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it was a very, that's a very uh, tropish thing for these crime stories, I believe. And I think, I think the weather also really helps to set even more in hammer in that noir feel because everything becomes very dark yet covered yeah. in white so that very right. black, yeah. black and white feel of oh yeah that's cool and, and they, I I, they even i think they even referred to the city as noir york city a lot <laughs> towards the end of the game <laughs> did they really that's that's so amazing noir york city wow okay so uh, we've got a tip here about Nicole Horn, and we're invading her foundry here. And um, this is a this is an interesting area, and it's got um, it's got some um, I guess almost difficulty. I had some difficulties trying to navigate, in particular this area here, where there's uh, it looks like there's lava on the ground, uh and there's no clear path across, <laughs> uh, no clear path across and i was like well what am i supposed to do here and uh, again you're just kind of like supposed to try different things out and i think what i ended up doing was just walking on like near the side of the wall to, I, to get across i definitely there. did a lot of uh parkour in this area like there's yeah. there's <laughs> i'm pretty sure i skipped some big chunks of it too because i was like <laughs> oh there's a window and i can uh, it looks like i need to cross all this stuff but i if i get to the window so then i get to the window and yeah <laughs> And you know, looking at what we're what we're playing through right here, and thinking what we've already gone through, the way the game evolves, even from like not just a straightforward killing perspective, but other things that Max has to do in the beginning of the game, I feel like it's a lot more, a little bit more discovery, a little bit more puzzle because they want you to really dig into the world. But now the world is alive, the world is after you, and it's platforming. The puzzles almost went you. away here, yeah. and not, now we have to jump across these boxes and outside of buildings where we, we didn't have too much of that early in the game. It's, yeah. the, the gameplay itself evolved 
in this last chapter. Yeah, they throw in a bunch of like traps and like like laser trip wires. And yeah, this laser stuff. traps. Yeah, yep. all that all that stuff. Yeah. Well, there is a, a reason why this whole building is trapped. And we just learned about this l the end of last uh, last mission. Uh, by the way, that mission was called um, Hidden Truths, I think. Uh, and you, you basically intercept or you pick up a phone call and there's a military guy that says, initiate Operation Dead Eyes. And that is a... Uh, that is an initiative to get rid of all evidence and all <laughs> witnesses and all scientists. And so what you need to do is go rescue a scientist. Uh, you have to go to the Deep Six. We're making our way to the Deep Six, which is a, uh, I guess it's an underground um, the military bunker research center. Well, it's yeah. a military bunker that's under the Cold Steel uh, Foundry. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and so we're breaking our way through. And by the way, I just got a note here. I love this. Anytime you get stuck in these older games, you just push all the buttons, yeah. and eventually you'll get a, a big, you know, 10 t tons of steel crash through a wall, and you're <laughs> like, oh, okay, I guess that's the way I need Sweet. to go there. So uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun, just seeing that there. So while we, uh, while we get to the Deep Six... Let's go ahead and talk about some of the weapons here. Lobos, do you want to walk us through a couple of your favorite weapons? Yeah, I mean, largely, like I said, I used that sniper rifle. I kind of started to save it for, for higher uh, threat targets because it is so much damage. And if you do headshots, like on any almost any of the regular enemies, it's a one-shot. So I started saving that mm -hmm. for kind of stronger enemies. And then with the Colt Commando as a backup, which is a very accurate uh, assault rifle, um so good it's probably i mm -hmm. think colt commando is probably my favorite weapon and then they also give you a grenade launcher which i used a ton <laughs> on groups of enemies because that thing was just that was just awesome in addition yeah, they to give you a couple of uzis that you can get, oh, get yeah. dual uzis dual uzis yeah, yeah. Awesome. you get yeah. dual berettas mm -hmm. oh 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 i love this okay so we just entered deep six here and we see two government agency or agents uh, talking with a guard here, and they both pull out their guns and they <laughs> unload a whole clip. Yeah. But what I love so much is one of the guy he runs out of ammo, <laughs> ejects the clip, reloads, and shoots him one more time. And the other guy's like, "I think he's dead." <laughs> Just like oh, these guys love their jobs. Yeah, really. You know that this game reminded me kind of a lot of um, if anyone's played Jedi Fallen Order and the stormtroopers' little dialogue. This game has so many, so many spots where I stopped. I just stopped my forward progression and listened to the conversations uh -huh. the the enemies were having. They're funny. They're hilarious. It, it yeah. again, it it makes the world alive and more real. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. one thing that we didn't touch uh, talk about. Um, well, we talked about that one TV show back in the hotel, but there was another TV show on there that uh, I linked both of you guys earlier today. It was yeah. called Address Unknown. I yep. watched uh I watched all the episodes of that and what <laughs> it, it was it's so weird it's so weird but but I Isn't learned there's it, something with a it's like supposed a to be go talking or something oh, yeah or a, yeah but but it's all supposed to be like, kind of an analogy rah, rah, for rah, rah, rah. like an analogy for what Max Payne is going through and like some of the some of the little inner inner tor torment that he has <laughs> Yeah, that, that yeah, flamingo was it's, creepy. That's a, that's a good point, yeah. And um, boy, this scientist is about to go through some stuff too. So we just used him to open up uh, open up another section into the Deep Six. And I think we actually see him later on just get brutally gunned down. Yeah, right there. I'm pretty sure that's the same scientist mm -hmm. that just got gunned down by a security guard. So he, we, we basically took him out of prison. I mean, to be fair... This place was was going to self-destruct anyway, so he was kind of dead with or without us. But, yeah, it was kind of sad. We could have rescued him, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I well, don't initially, he wasn't going to help you, and, and like Max found him in the jail cell. He's like, I'm not going to help you. Max says, okay, mm -hmm. I'm just going to put you back in. He goes, okay, fine, <laughs> yeah. I'll help you. <laughs> so he helps Max. Max gets through because... He's like, why, why do you want to go down to the bunker? This place is going to blow. You're, you're an idiot. So he tries to run off and gets gunned down by the government agents that's chasing Max. Yeah, yeah. And 
Oh man, two things I want to talk about. Let's talk about this room right here because you move into a room and it's, you know, it says it's going to self-destruct in 30 seconds. And so you're like, okay, uh, because it is locked off. And to the left you see, or through the glass, you see some laser trip wires. And you're like, um, is the door going to open for me? Like, what's going on? And Lobos, I watched you (laughs) you play this and you kind of did the same thing I did. I sat there for about 20 seconds. I'm like, okay, maybe maybe I need to get myself out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, you shoot one of the laser trip mines. It blows a hole in the wall and then you're able to progress. And then you take the elevator up, which is really cool. And you can see the fire coming down below because there's a grate there. But if you're standing on the grate, like Lobos, the ah. grate will fall and, and you'll fall to your death there. I just like to ex- uh, you know, experience everything the game has for me, even the experience unique deaths, every death. You know, yeah, so. yeah it's, it's cool. Uh, so before we did that, though, we did get access to the logs. Under- to I understand more about what this uh, Valkyr stuff is. It was part of this this uh project valhalla Mm -hmm. which there we go there's some more uh, of your viking mythology Mm -hmm. and this was a government more or less there's it's more complicated but basically call it a government uh sanctioned way to research making super soldiers and um basically got canned and nicole horn was really invested in it she kind of took it took the research and then I don't know if she formed Acer Corporation or sold it to Acer Corporation or brought it over there. In any case, Acer is basically the, the manufacturers of this this drug, Valkyr. Oh, After man. that, we go into a really cool... I love this. Yeah. You go and you, you meet BB, and Max is like, okay, I know BB's a traitor, but I'm going to go meet him anyway. And sure enough, he, he tries to gun you down. And what proceeds is a one of those multi-leveled parking lot levels where this car constantly is racing around (laughs) trying to shoot you. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Like, uh, the the whole idea of it uh, seemed like a very dynamic level. Um, Yeah. You know, you're like, whoa, the car's over there, and now it's over there. Like, where's it going to be next? Um, (laughs) And then you have, you're supposed to have this big final showdown with BB, and what happens if you get close enough to him, his AI script will activate and he has this boss fight. Yeah. But you can actually just sit there with a sniper <laughs> rifle and shoot him three times in the head and he just falls over and boss fight done. Ah. Lobos, did you did you did you uh find that or did you do it the right I, way? I I feel like I would have done the long range. I don't actually remember off the top of my head, but okay. seeing a, a you know, a named boy and then I would probably bust out my sniper rifle. <laughs> yeah. I think I ended yeah. up chasing him around and playing cat and mouse a bit. Hmm. <laughs> So this is where Woden introduces himself as as part of the uh, member of the inner circle. And he says to you, hey, we want to stop this thing, but our hands are tied. And so, so Max becomes, you know, Max is a vigilante, an outlaw, and now he almost has the influence of the shadowy leaders. But they they kind of have to wait for him to clean up their mess before they can really step in and help him out. So it's like, you okay, you finally have some powerful allies there. And so Woden's basically like, hey, you need to go take care of Nicole Horn and her cronies. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll free, uh, you know, we'll, we'll re- remove all the charges from you and we'll put you back on the streets. So I thought that was interesting. I don't remember, I don't think I've played Max Payne 2, so I don't know you know, what happens after all this. But once you spoilers. side up with the... Yeah, spoilers, right? <laughs> once you side up with um, the uh, Woden and his men, um, I'm not sure whose men actually come in and shoot out everyone, but you're basically sitting in a conference room and uh, some government mm-hmm. a- officials come in and gun down the whole room. And I think w- those are Woden's men helping you. And then you, you jump out the window. Mm-hmm. Alamaxi, did, did you get a feel for that one way or the other? I, I think it was supposed to be Horn's men. Mm-hmm. Because oh, Horn's the, men comes in and tries yeah. to Yeah, b- because it, whenever you're going through the Aether building, a lot of the, the enemies in there were, I mean, they look very similar. But yeah. I, would, I wouldn't imagine that, I wouldn't imagine Woden would have tried to, you know, off himself <laughs> and the people around him well, to, to try to sell anything. Well, but... yes, but, okay, so here's the thing. Um, okay, no, they are, they are Acer gunmen. 
That's right. Mm. But Woden pretends to be shot. So I think mm. maybe he's playing to get out of there alive. So he's pretending to be dead to, to make yeah. this. Yeah, he, he, defi he definitely something. had to play his cards right to live out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we're basically going through some sort of government building here. I, I know, or is this Acer? I, I never... I think we're Figured trying. I think here we're trying to get out of the building that houses the um, the inner circle. So this is this is kind oh, of yes, okay. a government building. We were in a meeting room, and now we're just trying to get the heck out of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it basically looks like a. Yeah, it's a multi-storied Capitol building. It yeah, really does look just, like a state Capitol yeah, yeah. building, right? Yeah, big circular, like multi-tiered level with. Yeah, just kind of a yeah. bunch of administration offices and that sort of thing. And I put this in the video because I really like this. As you're going down the stairs, uh, you actually have a couple SWAT members rappelling down from from the area. And, you know, we're, we're probably three levels from the end of the game. And, again, mm -hmm. I like that because they hadn't used that anywhere else True. that I remember. So yeah. we're still kind of throwing, introducing a couple new ways to bring enemies in here. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of different ways to bring the enemies into the scene. Like one one part we had just a little bit ago was a couple grenades dropped out of the top of a oh, yeah. an yeah. elevator, and you're like, "What?" You just hear this tink tink tink, tink. <laughs> and it's a, it's a part where you think you're supposed to go into that elevator because oh, mm -hmm. walk up these stairs, go right there. But two grenades drop, and then two guys drop from the top of the elevator, and going, "Whoa!" They're they're even like hiding. They're really hiding now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, and of course we're we're now going through uh, metal detectors, and I don't know. <laughs> does anyone else get a little bit of a joy when the metal detectors actually go off yes. when you walk through with guns? Yeah, yeah, it's more of that you know, turn on the sinks, flush the toilets, yeah, walk exactly, through the metal detector. Right. Awesome, man! It's like a real world. Uh -huh. So after that, uh, Max Payne's kind of like, hey, I know where I need to do. I, I take my time. He seems like he's almost going to go to Starbucks and get some tea and kind of chill, chill there for a little bit. He's in no rush. He knows where Nicole is and what he's got to do. And so it's almost that moment of like, of calm before the storm, right? And this level is really interesting because it's, if you imagine... I don't remember how far and long the Matrix this happens, but oh, there's yeah. this classic scene in the Matrix where they go and rob a bank. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They this is literally that, yeah. right? It, going into the Acer Corporation, <laughs> you walk through the metal security, the things go off, guards come in, they have those pillars on the sides of the walls there. You're jumping in slow motion. It was like that was yeah. that was a lot of fun. Um, but oh, unfortunately, and... we get up a little bit more here, and there's guys with That's grenade launchers. That's what I was going to say. Is now there's yeah. a bunch of dudes in this section with grenade launchers and... All over the place. Yeah. Uh, this is where the sniper rifle uh, is a lot of fun. It certainly uh, shines I, here. Again, I like to zoom in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't know. I like, the, I, like the, I like the camera, man. I like the, the I, zoom well, in. Well, I think the there I did on. use the zoom in. Sometimes they're too far away, so it's like, all right, you just need to, need to be a little a more accurate. Yeah, and I know I like how you mentioned the matrix there a minute ago, just mm -hmm. likening the the building to it because the bullet time you can you can feel and tell was oh, taken yeah. straight from it. Like the matrix <laughs> is a huge inspiration for this game. Yep. Yeah, one hundred percent. We're getting to a part where you know this game has progressively got more and more difficult, but I, I do feel like a lot of the difficulty from this game comes from. Enemies coming out of the bl out from uh, areas and just shooting you, and generally it's like you get one or two shots and then you're dead. Right. So I think that that strategy of peeking, hiding behind corners, and shooting actually works out really well, almost to the detriment of the game, right? Because I feel like the game is set up so you can you can dive and and jump and have fun, but it almost punishes you for going out of cover, you know? Yeah, especially when there's just a bunch of enemies and they're coming from all over the place. You can't just jump out into the into the open or you'll get real punished. Yeah. And I think I had somebody say that um, there's some sort of system in the game that if you're doing really well, it actually increases, like, uh, the difficulty. Not, like, you know, the oh, setting, so but... dynamic Yeah, difficulty. some sort of dynamic right, difficulty. Yeah, okay. I don't know exactly what that translates to, but... It kind of would explain any sort of difficulty curve as you get toward the end of the game. 
one of the things that I read about the AI is that um, it was very scripted so that if you were doing one thing, the enemies would react in this in a specific way. So like mm -hmm. if you started hiding, they would try to come out and get you. If you started charging in, they would start hiding and try to be, they would always try to get the advantage on you. We just got to a portion where we meet Mona again. And I don't know, I just, I'm very confused about this whole Mona stuff because you meet her again after, I don't know, two episodes, one episode and a half, you meet her again and then she instantly gets killed so I was like, all right. And then she dies in an elevator. The elevator closes its doors. And then when it reopens, her body is gone. Right. And what's confusing to me, Max like, oh, okay. Max says, I'm finally putting the pieces together. I'm like, could you clue me in? Because I don't know, like, is she actually alive and working with the other people? Or is she actually dead and someone took the body? Like, what's going on with Mona? What is her deal? She's there to add mystery, man. So the, uh, there in that one, I think uh, I think she was actually killed, and I think she was killed by Horn. I think she was actually mm. shot by by Nicole. Yeah, but who took her body and why? <laughs> well, it, she had well, the, she had that double, or or assumed double. That earlier in the game, there was there was a girl that looked identical to her. She's like, I'm actually her sister. Right. And and I wonder okay. if the body was taken to as, as just a, we don't want anyone to find this because we don't want anyone to you. find out there's another Mona. Okay. Hmm. Um, sure. We'll, we'll go with that. That <laughs> thoroughly confused me. Hey, and one other thing I, I thought was kind of comical. We saw uh, about a minute ago, you, you have to basically unlock, you have to hack into the security mainframe to unlock a bunch of doors. And so you go there and there's a bunch of servers. And so I'm running around uh, and I was like, is there like a console I'm supposed to be using? How the heck do I hack this? And then I, I kind of got into Max's head a little bit. I'm like, all right, how would Max Payne hack servers? And then it instantly clicked with me. Lobos, how would Max Payne hack servers? Shoot them. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what you have to do. And I was like, that is, that's great. I love it I'm so much. This is good. <laughs> So we're coming up on the very end section of the game here. We're going to the top of the Acer building. Uh, we did skip and, a section uh, where we were uh, assaulted by a helicopter oh, yeah. through helicopter, like giant windows. Yeah. And I think it's just a scripted series of like the helicopter shooting, right? Because I just stood behind a, a pillar and then I just waited. I actually took a bathroom break, I remember. And I think <laughs> I came back and I had survived, but then guys bust through the door and threw a grenade at me. So I died. So, yeah. <laughs> so you died. Yeah. I thought you had to shoot it. Uh, and maybe after a while. Oh yeah. Maybe it's it both. does yeah. go away, but I think it's, if you shoot it, it goes away faster. Yeah, that's true. And so we're at the very top of the building and uh, there's this huge telephone antenna and maybe not a telephone antenna. I don't know what you call this thing. Like, Whatever. It's like it's like it's a, a ra huge... radio tower on yeah. top. Of, radio tower, uh, yeah, yeah. like yes, what you would yes. see on top of the Empire State Building, just like this big, yeah. big metal just scaffolding. Yeah, yeah. And so when you first go there, like the uh, Max Payne actually shoots uh, two of the anchor points where the uh, the antenna is fastened, mm -hmm. and there's four total. And so you're like, okay, I know what I need to do here. Right. And you actually hear the the uh, the chopper who, who, so Nicole Horn ran into a chopper and they're, for some reason they're like, we're going to wait 30 seconds to take off or, yeah. or a minute to take off. And the guy, the, the pilot's like, I don't wait, like the way this wind looks. And it's like, okay, yeah, I know. I get it. I get, I know what you want. Need shut up. Let me do it. So I managed to shoot the first one pretty easily, but the second one is actually a little trickier to shoot because you can see it through some gratings, but I couldn't shoot it through the gratings. Lobos, I know you found a really asinine way to, <laughs> to shoot it. I, 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 as always, asinine. asinine oh, as well, always. Look, you're um, basically doing you, what I did. No, you were like you. Well, fell I jumped like on the onto side the, of the side building. of the building, okay, and then I saw you it there. Basically, you were like one inch from falling. <laughs> Look, I did it anyway, that way the first time, and then the second time, because some, something happened, I died or something like that. And then yeah. the second time, I went up just like you did there on where yes, the other one like, was. Oh, yeah, this is there. where I go. So. Yeah, so you, you shoot the, four, the fourth one, and I was expecting that to be game over. And I was like, um, hmm, okay, what am I supposed to do now? 
and the the clock is still ticking the the helicopter pilot's still saying like all right 15 seconds yep. i'm like okay well maybe i need to give this thing a little push so i use my grenade launcher i don't know could you use like guns as well i, I think it's so. just time i think if you had shot the two and then you wait there then it just oh, happens because really? I, I believe that's mm. i thought that's how i did it i thought that i don't because if you don't if you don't succeed the helicopter comes and guns you down comically. yeah yeah but i think if you but, shoot out mm. the the cables i i could be remembering incorrectly but i thought i did I it and then just you have waited. to shoot the the i thought you you shot the antenna as well uh, maybe i did that's eh, hard to remember yeah. that's I what i had antenna. stuck in my head i can't remember if i was shooting it with a shotgun by the end because i was out of ammo <laughs> or if i did hit yeah. it with the grenade launcher but mm. i i remember i hit it when they were saying one like one mm. zero and oh. it started falling. So I even I couldn't tell you mm. if that was scripted to fall or not. Oh, now I got to look it up. Okay. All right. I, had, I think I had ten seconds left on mine though, so I think, I think, um, I think you do need to shoot it. After that, Max Payne kind of walks smugly to the edge of the building, and this is where the game initially started. You basically standing over the side of the edge, and you've got cops that are pointing their guns at you. And, you know, he, Max, his mission is completed. He lets himself be taken into custody. But he's not really concerned because he does see Woden uh, in the crowd there. And so he knows that he's going to he's gonna be taken he's care gonna of. He's going to be all you right. Know? Yeah, I, I like that they... Actually, I don't quite know if, if Woden comes through. Maybe he doesn't. But I like the the thing of like Woden doesn't double cross you and be like, well, take him to the brig, boys. He's more like, hey, you know, you did your job, you get your reward. So I, I appreciate that that they have a a nice little ending there, where you feel uh feel vindicated finally. Like all this all this weight's finally lifted. You don't get your family back. But... Yeah, was it worth it, Max, Mister Payne? <laughs> so I checked and I did I did shoot it. I think because I was also okay. just like I don't know what to do now and just started shooting everything because that's Max Payne. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when, when in doubt shoot things there yes mm -hmm. yes so and that's that's pretty much the end of max Payne. it has a uh you know a nice little ending there again you actually do meet jim brevera and he you know as we talked about initially when we met him brevero is actually he he's kind of along with the, you with the ride he's along with you for the ride mm. through this whole stuff and so he's almost he almost seems like a like a companion or like a friend mm. in, in a way that he's still trying to capture you but you know i, I don't know it's hard mm. to describe there's there's a lot of there's a lot of points in the game where you can stop and listen to uh, a radio and yep. it adds these little bits of jim is mad he's pissed he does not he doesn't realize that bb was not killed by pain he he thinks yeah. that pain is on this murder spree mm -hmm. and it, it you uh, mentioned earlier he comes across like Gordon from uh, from Batman, and I really felt that too. Like just that the the a commissioner of the NYPD, he's just this. He didn't wasn't dressed like a police officer. He's dressed mm -hmm. more like a detective, even. Right. And he, he's like he, he just he is the powerful force that's that's yelling for for uh, Payne to turn himself in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, while that was the final level, did you guys know there is a secret level? What? No, I didn't. I didn't Tell know. us about the secret level. So there is a secret level if you beat the game on the hardest difficulty. Uh. After you beat the final level, then you get an additional level called, um, I think it's just called the secret finale. And I don't think that, uh, I didn't really look and see what, if it added any story or anything, but it's just another you have a bunch of killer suits in a room. It's uh, you're kind of in the Acer Corporation building, mm -hmm. and it's another just have fun and survive. Interesting level. Okay, so it doesn't right. it doesn't like give you the true ending or something like that. Yeah, it it doesn't give you anything like a true ending. I think. Interesting. Well, that's uh, that's Max Payne. Uh, let's see, Alamaxia, give us your your closing thoughts on this game. I am so happy I went back and played this because <laughs> it erases the horrible memories I had of just simply a dark room with babies crying and it replaces <laughs> it with, with crazy memories of this just, th th this, it, it was a noir. I, I played, I played through a noir film and 
it played so well how the the problem just kept escalating and getting deeper and bigger and max realized quickly how in over his head he was and his resolve to see it through to the end and knowing that he probably wasn't going to walk out in the end i think the story was well written the graphics were incredible for playstation 2 and overall it's it's a great game it is so so fun Lobos, what do you what do you want to talk about here in terms of um, your experience? I really liked how the game handled. Like, uh, it was a very responsive shooter. Like I said, I did a lot of like corner peeking and stuff, and with clunkier kind of gameplay, that's that's much harder to do. But, um, you know, I I don't think I used the slowdown as much as you guys, but I think because. I was just enjoying running around and gunning people like that. Like, yeah, there were parts where it, it would get difficult to the point that you pretty much needed to spam slow-mo until everything died. Um, but that's the beauty <laughs> of it is, is yeah. you're, you're basically Neo and you do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, the, the word that, that always kind of resonated with me is just fun. This game, yeah. this game is just like, Hey, we want to make killing, <laughs> killing bad guys fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it's kind of no nonsense, right? You, there's there's not a lot of collectibles to find to slow you down. There's not key cards. You know, you just go from area to area and you kind of just shut your brain off and, and have some fun there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So um, nice. that's going to do it uh, for us on the Max Payne today. And uh, we actually got a new Patreon, <laughs> Patreon supporter. Uh, that, I think it's like three months in a row we got a, a new one, so Whoa. we're kind of on a roll. That's awesome. Dang, so thank you so much you. to <laughs> Brian for uh, supporting the Saturday Morning Gaming Show. And if you want to support us as well and help uh, help us uh, check out some new titles in the future, you can head on over to SaturdayMorningGamingShow.com to learn more, or you could just go to like Patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Gaming Show. But... The Saturday Morning Gaming Show .com site has a lot of cool stuff. Al Maxia helped out a lot with that, and we got all our episodes there. You can just use that as like your repository for the videos and the podcasts. So check, check, uh, check it out. And um, yeah, you can even you you don't even need to email us. You can actually just submit <laughs> forms to us that say, "Hey, you know what? You guys are awesome. I especially like that fat wizard guy. I think he's probably the coolest of the group." <laughs> and I say, "Oh, you're too kind." But yeah, you're right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, lots of lots of interesting uh, stuff there to check out, and so we urge people to to check it out there. All right. And with that, I think it's it's time we announce the next game. Isn't that what we usually do around here? I think so. So we we're kind of kicking it, going back old school again. Mm. I know we we kind of dipped into the two thousands, and like we that was there was technology there that kind of scared me. So like well, maybe we should go back something a little more simpler, where cartridges uh, <laughs> dominated the the world there. Back when uh, Dragon Quest wasn't called Dragon Quest, but was called Dragon Warrior. Oh, yes. We're going to be taking a look at the original Dragon Warrior on NES. So I have, I, I did play this for about 30 minutes once. Uh, Lobos, Alamaxia, have you guys played this? Very briefly, I, myself. In my childhood, I used a game Genie and played it, Aww. which means I know nothing That's, about the game. Right. So That's I'm going no through it completely blind, and uh, it's 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 been fun to to get back into an old, old, old RPG. It's it's <laughs> very old. Yeah, it feels like right when they were converting from text based to graphics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that that's going to be in February. So uh, stick around for that one. But until then, we have reached the end credits of this episode, and we really wanted to thank everyone for listening to us on the pad podcast or you know watching us on Lobos Jr.'s channel. And, of course, we do release a new podcast every month. That's a lot of months in a year. 
And uh, there's an episode to go along with each one of those. So make sure to follow and subscribe to the podcast. You can get that on iTunes, Google, you know, wherever you want to listen to it. Uh, you can even just go to SaturdayMorningGamingShow.com and just click on the buttons yeah. there that we handily provide you there. Yep, we have and Spotify course, embedded on the website. Spotify, and, uh, yeah, embedded. Nice. And if it, That's fancy. Yeah, That's and it, fancy. if you uh, have any other platforms that you prefer, then at the top we have a link to our Apple podcast, and uh, I believe there's a couple other links to just some other feeds. Uh, so you can get your podcast wherever you are comfortable with it. Nice. If you have any feedback for our episodes or the website, you can contact us through that website or just shoot us an email at Saturday Morning Gaming Show at gmail.com. You can also follow our Twitter at Saturday M Gaming. And on the website, we even have a feed of the Twitter. Right Holy on that main crap, page. So just go to the website. Who, 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 just go to the website. Do we thought about this? <laughs> Get Why out are you here. still listening to us? <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, we wanted to give a special shout out to Technoax for uh, much of the music on this episode. For Saturday Morning Gaming, I'm Alamaxia. And I'm Lobos. And I'm the Fat Wizard. We'll see you in February with Dragon Warrior on the NES.